In this video, I'm going to show you scientifically the best way to gain stage when you're recording DI tracks. So if you use amp sims, this is a must watch. Lots of people are getting these different concepts mixed up and it's causing them to have less than ideal guitar tone. And nobody wants less than ideal guitar tone. Also, if you're looking for additional tips to make your guitar tone sound killer, I have a link to download my free rock and metal mixing cheat sheet. I have lots of good go-to EQ settings and compression settings in that guide, and it covers everything that you're gonna deal with in a rock or metal song. So go and grab that, there's a link in the description. So the goal when we're recording our guitar DIs is to maximize our signal to noise. That way with distortion, we're minimizing the amount of noise that gets brought up and is audible. So let's talk about how to calculate your signal to noise so you can find the optimal gain staging for your guitar chain when you're recording your DIs. But in order to do that, we have to understand what signal to noise means. So the first step is to find our signal level. So when we're recording our guitar DIs, this is basically time and this is gonna be the level. And this is always in dB, usually dB full scale, which just means that you know, we have a, a digital ceiling at zero dB full scale that we have to keep below when we export these tracks, otherwise they'll clip. So the first step is to find our signal level. That is the level that our guitar is making in our recording. So as we're playing our guitar, you know, we might get all these spiky transients. That's just the guitar notes and the strumming. What we want to calculate is basically the average level of this signal. And I'm going to show you how to do this using free software in a second. So that is our guitar signal. Now if we also do another recording, and this time we don't play the guitar at all, we just have the guitar plugged in and hit record, and it's going to be very, very quiet, but it'll be, it'll be some noise there, okay? So we want to calculate exactly how loud this noise is. This is going to be the unwanted background hum and all that. It should not be noise from you bumping the strings and things like that. That this, this noise has to be just the inherent noise from your guitar chain going to your interface or your preamp. Now, it's really simple. If we want to find our signal to noise ratio or SNR, all we need to do is take our guitar signal and then subtract our noise. So if the average guitar signal is, let's say, minus 10, EB full scale, and our noise floor is on average, let's say, minus 80 dB full scale. All we do is subtract that. So minus 10 minus negative 80. Remember, if we minus negative, it's plus. So our signal to noise ratio is going to be 70 dB. So the goal of gain staging from your interface or your preamp is to make this number as big as possible. You can do that one of two ways. One way is to increase the level of our guitar signal. And the other thing is, is we want to minimize or try to reduce the noise in our guitar chain. Now, this noise can be caused from a number of different factors, including your guitar, your pickups, your cable in some cases, and probably most importantly, your preamp or your interface. So now let's go and actually record some DIs and learn how to calculate the optimal gain staging for our DI tracks. All right, so let's plug this bad boy in and record some DIs. So what I've done is I've set up five different tracks at five different gain settings that I have on my interface. Also make sure that your interface is set up for instrument input. You can technically still record it without having it set up as an instrument input, but the levels are gonna be slightly off so your gain staging might suffer. And all that means is that your noise floor will probably be higher and it's gonna reduce your signal to noise ratio. So now what we want to do is just play a riff or something and record it at different levels of us playing that riff. And we want to span from the quietest gain settings to the loudest gain settings. So this first case, I have plus 10 dB of gain, then 20, then 25, then 30. And then I got bored and went all the way up to 40 dB of gain. You can see this thing is like totally clipped out, right? It's just a giant square wave. Okay, if we listen to each track played back, this is what it sounds like. Sounds like trash on that last one. 
But these last two, you can audibly hear some distortion from the clipping. Okay, we want to try to avoid that if at all possible. Not only is it potentially compromising the sound of our guitar DI, but it's also going to limit our signal to noise ratio. And I will show you that in a second. So some of you might be thinking, why can't I just record this quietly and then just turn this up until it gets just below clipping? The problem with that is that what we're increasing here is both our signal and our noise floor. And like I showed you earlier, if they're both going up by the same amount, we're not improving our signal to noise ratio. So proper gain staging is going to be to maximize our signal to noise ratio. So let's find out which one of these has the highest signal to noise ratio. Now, when you're making all these recordings, you playing the same riff over and over, make sure to collect about 10 seconds or so of silence before you start playing the guitar. What I recommend for the silent part is just to gently put your fingers on the strings and just hold them silent, okay? And then try not to move too much. You don't want your pickups to pick up any extra noise. We were trying to just isolate the noise coming from the pickups themselves. Okay, and also do this in a quiet environment because your pickups can actually act like a microphone and pick up sound in the room. This is actually why feedback happens. So this is called Audacity. It's a free digital audio workstation you can download. But they have some really cool tools built into this that make it super easy to calculate what are signal to noises. <coughs> Hold on, Internet. My doggy's barking. So in Audacity, we're going to select about the middle section of that silent region, and we're going to go to Analyze, then Measure RMS. Okay, this stands for Root Mean Squared, and that's basically the power of our noise signal. So this is telling us it's at minus 110.45 dB. Okay, now we're going to do the exact same over our riff. Okay, we're going to get the average RMS value for that, and it's at minus 32.88, okay? You're basically going to repeat this for every single one of those files that you have, okay? So now we do the plus 20 dB track. We can do the average and, again, analyze, measure RMS. We get our RMS value for our noise and then our guitar signal, analyze, measure, Okay. Now you want to record all these values on a piece of paper, or if you're like me and a total nerd, I made it into just a Google spreadsheet. And on this spreadsheet, I just am recording the amount of gain that we applied with our interface, our preamp, the resulting noise during the silent portion of that file that we recorded, and then also the guitar signal. Then all you need to do to calculate your signal to noise is to just subtract the noise from the guitar signal. So if you're a spreadsheet nerd like me, it's just take this column minus this column, and you're going to get a series of values here. So this is our signal to noise. So now we just find the gain value that has the highest number for your signal to noise, and that is going to be the optimal gain staging for recording your DI tracks. So you look here, this number is the largest. So when we set up our interface for recording DIs, we wanna apply about 20 dB of gain. Now, if we look closely at these different signal to noise values for the different gain settings, you can see that these middle three are pretty close. We're within like a half a dB of signal to noise for anything in the middle here. Where we run into issues with recording DIs is if your gain is too low or you have it too hot. That's when we're going to get a reduction in our signal to noise and therefore the noise in our guitar signal is going to be louder than these other settings. So it's not a good idea to have the gain super quiet and just clip gain it up later on. And it's also a bad idea to go in too hot and record very loud DIs because we're going to get a reduction in our signal to noise. And the reason this happens is because we're getting outside of the linear working range of our preamp or our interface. So this is the sweet spot for this particular piece of gear, and you need to figure that out for your gear, and then try to stay within that ideal range so you can maximize your signal to noise and have super clean guitar DIs. So to recap, the goal when you're recording your guitar DI track is to maximize your signal to noise ratio. So to figure that out, you have to go to the preamp you're using, do a few different takes where you're recording the DI at different levels, and then calculate your signal-to-noise ratio. That is the scientifically best way to do this. 
somewhere along those different values, you're going to find one that maximizes the guitar signal and then minimizes the noise floor. Set your preamp at that level and then record your guitars. And also, a quick pro tip, make sure you're recording your wave files as 24-bit audio wave files. 16-bit is going to limit your noise floor to minus 96 dB full scale. And from the measurements I showed in this video, my noise floor is at minus 110 dB. So if I record those guitar DIs at 16-bit, I'd actually be throwing away 14 dB of my dynamic range. So let me know what you thought of this video. Is this too much effort to figure out where your sweet spot is on your interface? Let me know in the comments below. Do you have a better or faster way you would suggest doing this? Also drop me a comment. And I know there's some people that actually prefer the sound of a clipped guitar DI. If that's you, let me know why. I want to remind you that there's a link in the description to download my free rock and metal mixing cheat sheet. Go and grab that before you go on to the next video. I'm Bobby Bale of the Mixing Mastering Engineer at Raytown Productions, and I'll see you in another video.